Welcome back to Let's Code. I'm Chris Biscardi, and today we are finishing up the refactor from Heron to Bevy Rapier in our 2D platformer example. So there are two main uh, things that we took care of since the last episode. The first is the ground detection, which if I jump, you can see there's a little box on the bottom of the zombie collider, which is uh, visible in the ground right now as we move back and forth. That is the sensor that we use for the ground detection. And it's something that I had to fix moving away from Heron into Bevy Rapier. The other major difference, is, of course, is the actual uh, colliders are now back on the level itself. Um, so you can still see our, our little zombie dude is a little floaty. Um, if we actually jump, we get a little bit of a downward gravity increase, which was the intended effect uh, switching from Heron to Bevy Rapier. But this is just finishing up the refactor before we go into actually building out a jump in movement that feels good. So for the first change in the code, uh, there's a commit here that basically takes the colliders that we were building, the horizontal rectangles that we see. If I just scroll over to the actual game, you can see the debug outlines for each of the colliders stacked up on top of each other horizontally um, or stacked vertically, but the plates of ground colliders are built horizontally. And before this video, they were off to the side in the bottom left um, in the wrong spot. So some something inside of Heron parented these to uh, the collider and put them in the right position. So the only change we made here is instead of having commands.spawn, uh, we grabbed the level entity and parent the collider cuboids to the level so that the transform offsets are based on the level. And this has the added benefit of uh, despawning all the colliders when we go from one level to another. So if we move to the right here, we have a second level and this will despawn all of the uh, colliders in the first level. The second is a little bit more fun. It's the ground detection. Um, so the ground detection was broken previously. The actual logic for how we do ground detection didn't hasn't changed at all. All we do is the ground sensor intersecting ground en entities and then we insert anything that is intersecting with our sensor that is on the bottom of our player collider. And when the collision event is stopped, then we uh, remove it from that group. And then we can use that true or false value to uh, actually detect whether somebody should be able to jump or not. Now, these events weren't firing when we switched from Heron to Bevy Rapier. So it was important to add the active events, collision events component uh, to our colliders. Or uh, more accurately, uh, we added this collision events to either one of the colliders that were involved in the collision. In this case, we add the collision events flag to the sensor that we're using to detect the ground. And that enables the actual collider events or collision events in the event reader here to fire. So the only events that we're getting here are actually the ones from this sensor because it's the only thing that has the active events, collision events flag set on it. And that's really it. It's just like, two basically two lines of code to get everything working again uh, from the previous refactor to finish it off. Now, there is one major change between Heron and Rapier that is the last thing that is kind of an issue. Um, if we look at this issue right here in the Heron GitHub issues, there's this rigid bodies clip sync into static geometry at slightly high speeds, right? So the, you can see the ghost in this uh, Bevy ECS LDTK example which is the same crate that we are using for our tile layouts. Um, and the ghost clips into the ground here when it lands. You can see this again in another example here where this green cube will come over to the side and it will clip into the side of this other collider, this giant box. There's a bunch of good information in this thread. Uh, BitGarden has the best explanation for it. And they point to a bevy rapier solution that already exists. And that is this right here. In big bold text in the common mistakes area of the Rapier uh, documentation website, it says, why is everything moving in slow motion? And basically the problem is that Heron doesn't use SI metrics. So in our game, since we're dealing with like the size of people and stuff, we're gonna be using meters, which is why we set pixels per meter here. Um, it's the ratio from the number of pixels that we define for say our zombie sprite and how that converts into the rapier physics world. So in this case, for 50, every pixel value will get divided by 50 before being input into rapier. So, so this pixels per meter is saying that one physics meter is equal to 50 pixels on the screen. 
So if you wanted somebody that was slightly tall, you would probably make them maybe 106 pixels or 116 pixels or something like that. And we can see this as an issue because Bevy ECS LDTK in their platformer example uses negative 2000 uh, meters, which is like 4,500 miles an hour uh, for gravity. And that's because Heron is using individual pixels as the meter unit instead of something that scales larger. So that's something we're going to have to deal with in the future as we actually build up our jump and our behaviors. Um, but it's something that we are now handling correctly or capable of handling correctly rather than dealing with it on the individual pixel level. So that's it for today. A little bit of a short video. I just wanted to mention that I finished up the refactor, that everything is working now. And uh, that concludes our usage of Heron, I believe, on this channel for the foreseeable future. Anyway, I think Bevy Rapier is working out pretty well. And uh, I will see you in the next video.